Hello and welcome to today's JavaScript tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over JavaScript's many native array functions in under five minutes. There are a lot to go over, so let's get started. To begin, we're going to write up an array. You can follow along at home by opening your developer tools in any page by pressing Control shift i on a PC or Command shift i on a Mac. With your developer tools open, let's define an array. Ver a equals, and it's just going to be a list of names. We're going to say Sansa, Area, Rickon, Bran, Rob. And if we say A, that's a native JavaScript array. I hope you are with me so far. Now if we press A and dot, we can see a list of all of JavaScript's native properties, one of the many advantages of using Chrome developer tools. We're going to explore as many of these as we can. We're going to start off with filter. So a filter function um, will run a function on each element of an array and make a new array of all the elements of that array which return true. Easier demonstrated. So we'll say a.filter function n, where n is the name, and we're going to say return n.lengths is greater than 4. And you see it's created a new array containing only the names Sansa and Rickon because those returned true on the test. If I look at the original array A, it has not changed, but I've received a new array which I can use whatever I want for. Very handy. Next up, we're going to talk about map. Now a map returns a new array of the same length as the old array where each array is the product of a function that is run on each element of the array. Once again, more easily demonstrated. So we're going to say a.map function, n, where n is a name, and we'll say return n plus stark. And we have a new array where each element of the array now has the word stark on the end of it. If we look at the original a, array a, it has not changed but we can create a new array of equal length as the same element of the first array using map. Next up we're going to talk about push. So push adds a new element to the end of the array. Very simple to do, so we're going to say a.push john. And it returns the new index, and if we look at a, the array has changed. So now if I run, say, um, the same map that returns start to the end, we get a new mapped array because the push function modifies the array. The first two ones we looked at didn't. Now we're going to talk about splice. Splice is the opposite of push and it's a little more powerful as well. It can remove an element of the array at the index pass. So we're going to say a dot splice one two three four five six array dot splice five and that returns the element that was spliced. Now if I look at the array, you can see the array only has the remaining elements. If we run it again on a different index, it will splice all the elements from that point up until the end of the array. If I pass a second argument, it will splice only that many elements. And here is the remaining array, not too many starts left. So let's redefine the array. Um, as the original array. And there are our Starks. Next, we're going to talk about every. So every will reduce a entire array to one Boolean value, depending on if each of the values that it ran on the function returned true. Easier demonstrated. So we'll say a.every function name, and we'll say return n.length is greater than 4. And it's returned false. It's reduced that array to a boolean. If we say a dot every name length x greater than two, it returns true. Next, we're going to look at sum. The sum is just like every, but it will return true if any of them pass that test. So a dot sum function n return n dot length is greater than four returns true. But if I say n dot length is greater than six, it returns false. That's all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed learning about filter, map, every, sum, push, and splice. Hope you catch my other tutorials. They have lots of great stuff too. Have a super day.